All right, good morning, everyone. We're going to get started here. I know we're a little bit sleepy today. I am too. Good morning, Ryan. We'll begin with the rite of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit of God, and search our hearts with the light of Christ. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. So you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second commandment is this, to love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these two. On these two hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Come then, let us return to the Lord and say, O Lord, our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Dear beloved, in the death and resurrection of Jesus, God, the source of all mercies, has given us the gift of forgiveness and restoration, not counting our trespasses against us, but sending the Spirit to shed abroad God's love among us. By the ministry of reconciliation entrusted by Christ to this church, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. May you share this gift of mercy with all the world. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. 
O God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light that all our deeds may reflect your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is from the book of Numbers, the 22nd, 21st chapter. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water. We detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Ephesians, the second chapter. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses. And we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who was rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, 
Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and the people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil and hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the season of Lent, I've been telling you about how great our Hebrew Bible readings are. And if you think back to the first week of Lent, I said four of the five readings are about God's covenants with us. And there's one that's not, but we'll get to it when we get to it. We'll worry about it later. Today is later, basically. So you heard the story that doesn't really fit with the other ones. The reading we heard today comes from the book of Numbers. Numbers is not a book we hear from often in worship. I think in September will be the only other time you hear from it this year. But a lot of the material probably sounds familiar because Numbers is another version of the Exodus story. So it sort of lies on top of it. Many of the characters are the same. Moses, Miriam, Aaron are all in there. Many of the places are the same. The Red Sea in today's reading, Sinai is an important place. And a lot of the problems are the same too. So like we heard today, the people just complain. They get out of Egypt and then like five verses later, they're like, this is terrible. While traveling through the wilderness, we're told, the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt just to die in the wilderness? There's no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. There's no water and there's no food, and the portions are way too small. But the author says that God, increasingly frustrated by all the complaining, responds by sending a plague of poisonous snakes. And apparently the intervention works. The people come to Moses, say, we've been complaining too much, we haven't been trusting God, please tell God to take the snakes away. And this is where, for our purposes, the story takes an important turn. If God did send the snakes, in theory, God could just get rid of them. But instead, God proposes an unorthodox solution to the problem. God says, make a poisonous serpent, set it on a pole, and everyone who's bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses did, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. So the setup of the story is admittedly strange, but it's the remedy that's the really important part. Because this is not a story about how you should complain less or about why we don't like snakes. It's a story about how we find healing and wholeness, restoration, and peace. Oftentimes, when we are dealing with a problem, we hold out hope that it will simply go away on its own. If we find a way to distract ourselves, take our mind off it, not pay attention to it, maybe it will resolve itself. If that worked, you can imagine an alternate ending of the story in which Moses goes to God and says, what should I do for these people? And God might reply, I don't know, keep them busy. Take them for a walk, put a show on, see how they feel in the morning. And yet, in this story, the solution lies in looking at the problem and looking at the hurt and looking at the loss head on, actually dealing with the thing that's ailing us. Imagine what would happen, for example, if you were having neck pain and you went to the doctor and you said, I'll do whatever treatment you think is good, but you're not allowed to touch my neck. Or you decided, I'm gonna help my neighbors experiencing housing and food insecurity but I don't want to give anybody food. I don't want to give anybody housing. Or maybe you were having relationship problems, so you went to a couples therapist and said, I'll be honest about everything, but we can't talk about my relationship. It would be difficult to get much of anywhere. 
it's difficult to actually find healing unless we face the snake. St. John understood that. Today we heard a reading from one of the most important scenes in St. John's Gospel, where Nicodemus, a leader of the Pharisees, comes to Jesus to figure out who he is and what his purpose is. And perhaps since these men are both Jews with a knowledge of Scripture, Jesus chooses to explain himself using a story from the Old Testament. And imagine all the stories he could have chosen. You could talk about Noah, you could talk about the Exodus, you could talk about Abraham, you could talk about Isaiah. What does Jesus talk about? The seemingly obscure story from Numbers. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Jesus draws a connection between Moses' bronze serpent and his death and resurrection. It's not just a visual connection, it's something deeper than that. Jesus suggests that he is here to offer us life in God, what John calls eternal life. And the way that Jesus offers us God's eternal life is by experiencing a very human death. Jesus does not heal us by standing back at a distance and offering words of advice about what he would do. And Jesus does not eliminate the perils of living by doing some magic trick that gets rid of the snakes. Jesus heals us by taking on our experiences, our losses, and our griefs and bringing them into God's unending life. In the fourth century, Gregory of Nazianzus, who was a bishop in Turkey, had this great little aphorism where he said, that which is not assumed is not healed. In other words, unless it's actually experienced, unless it's actually seen, unless it's actually faced, what ails us can't be fixed. How does Jesus defeat temptation? By being tempted. How does Jesus heal our rejection of others? By being rejected. How does Jesus conquer death? By dying. This is why St. John uses this number story to explain Jesus' death and resurrection. In the cross, we see the very worst of what we humans do to one another. And at the same time, we see the depth of God's unending mercy for us. God experiences our death so that we can receive God's life. None of this gets rid of the snakes, of course. And sometimes life goes on biting you. Sometimes it gets you pretty good but it gives us the perseverance to go on living, facing our difficulties head on. Our sense of separation from God is real, but in Jesus, God has already drawn near to us. Our rejection of one another is real, but in Christ, God accepts us without condition. And Lord knows death is real, but in Christ, we always die into God's unending life. Face the snake, Moses tells us, and you will find healing. Follow the way of Jesus' cross, St. John tells us, and you will find life eternal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let's join together with the church around the world as we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the mighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being but the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Invite the assembly to sit or kneel for the reading of today's prayers. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and the world in need. Gracious God, your love unites. Give vision to the global church and foster cooperation and mission. Increase interreligious understanding and ecumenical dialogue. Make your church a sanctuary for all fleeing persecution, disaster, and war. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, your love enlivens. Restore balance to the earth's fragile habitats. Preserve wilderness lands, rainforests, and wildlife. Cleanse oceans and rivers. Make us good stewards of the earth. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Righteous God, your love liberates. We give thanks for those who courageously witness to your liberating love. Free all people from the evils of racism, religious strife, and hatred. We pray especially this week for the people of Denmark, the Faroe Islands, Finland, Greenland, Iceland, Norway, and Sweden. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Merciful God, your love heals. Care tenderly for all those, all whose loved ones perish from pandemic disease in every nation. Strengthen healthcare workers, first responders, and caregivers. Relieve all who live with chronic illness and pain. If you have any additional petitions, I invite you to offer them at this time. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy, your mercy is, great. is great. Incarnate God, your love enlightens. Open our hearts and minds to fresh understandings of our faith. Deepen our love for you and for one another. Teach us to pray for our enemies. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. Is great. Abiding God, your love saves. Those who died in the faith are made alive in Christ. We give thanks to your promise that we also will be raised to newness of life. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also, also with you. you. Thank you.
it's up there for you. I got it. That's all right. Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and the dreams of all. Unite them with the prayers we offer. Grace a table with your presence and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray. Blessed Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the whole host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Christ, Christ Jesus, your Son, our Lord. Out of your great love for this world, you sent Jesus not to condemn, but to save us, so that all who trust in him may not perish, but have eternal life. So we give you thanks that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your spirit on us and these gifts we share that the bread we break and cup we bless may be the body and blood of Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Right?
Let us pray. Lord God, you have renewed us with living bread from heaven. By it, you nourish our faith, increase our hope, and strengthen our love. Teach us always to hunger for him who is true and living bread, and enable us to live by every word that proceeds from out of your mouth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the announcements. Does anyone have any? Diane. Hey. Yes, I saw an advanced screening last night and it was wonderful. So just a couple notes. Ryan, can you just keep an eye on him for a second? He's good? Okay. Uh, the spring retreat is going to be next Saturday. I need to send in numbers tomorrow. So if you're interested in coming, and you should, it's a lot of fun, please just talk to me after worship today and we can get you signed up. The flower fund for Easter, we have about another week. There's a sign up on the Narthex bulletin board. You can write on the back if you need to. I'll find it. Please do that. And then Sophia Bowden, uh, good news, out of the hospital in rehab in Saddlebrook. I'm going to go see her tomorrow. If you want to come with, let me know, and we can take a trip down 208 together to Saddlebrook. So that's all I have. I invite you to stand and receive the blessings. This is like surround sound. I got stuff everywhere. It's great. May God the Father, from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name, strengthen you with God's Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. peace and share the love of God. Thanks be to God.